Hey, this is Brooke Drum from PrinterBot.com, and we're going to build a Raspberry Pi camera and case. It's going to end up looking like this, if we're lucky. It's a pretty easy build, actually. The first thing I like to do is go ahead and we're going to take these parts that end up being around the camera, and we're going to put the ends on it. And it's going to go in here. Now, this just keys in. There's so little room to work with on this little guy that uh, it's really no room for a screw or anything. So we're just going to put a little dab of glue. Hopefully not glue the camera. This is super glue. Uh, Loctite brand, but you can use something else. Then you got like one shot to get this right. I like to hold the sides in and hold it down. It usually sets up in about 10 seconds. Some people like that to dry before they move on, but I don't. I just keep keep rolling because it actually uh, cures really quickly. So that's going to be our camera. We're going to set that aside for later. The rest of this is pretty straightforward. Uh, the pie is going to go right down in here. Now, quick note. To actually do this correctly, um, we're going to have to plug in all these cables because it's a closed box. We've got a notch right here that the cords are going to come through. So there's a bit of a finicky thing we have to do here in a second to route these cords down. There's going to be one Ethernet. You have to provide that yourself. There's actually two of these USB. One is going to plug up here. One is going to be down here for power. Um, some people might even have a little power plug or you could buy one. That's the power. So uh, another cord is going to plug in down here for power. But the first thing we need to do, we've got our hardware kit right here. It's very basic. Tools needed besides glue are basically an Allen wrench and there's one screw that you could do that with a hand screwdriver and I might try it for a few turns, but optionally you can do that. So first thing I'm just going to this doesn't have any risers or anything. It's just going to basically go through these uh, mounting holes. And an M3 actually fits in pretty tight, to be honest. Um, but you can get it in there. Kind of feels like it's threading a little bit, but once you get all the way through it, it gets a little easier. I would not use... Um, I don't think I would use the power screwdriver on this step. Uh, these are all, oh, you know what? Are these all the same size? Yeah, looks like it. Just want to make sure. If you wanted to get brave and you don't like how tight these are going into the PCB, the printed circuit board, you could actually uh, take a, a drill bit and by hand, but you got to get the right size. You can kind of just rough it out a little bit. Notice I'm not doing that for fear that on the video I'll crack the PCB. <laughs> okay, so it's through just a little bit. I want to break the surface here so I can feel where that is going to go in. I'll do the same here. Now, when you tighten these down, you don't want to go crazy. You just want to get it to mount on there fairly firmly, but you don't want to go until you're starting to hear cracks on the circuit board. This might be a good opportunity to speed the tape up. So that's starting to get snug. I can just feel it and I'm not going to over tighten it. Just get it nice. Uh, you just want it in place. Uh, don't gouge the board with your Allen wrench. There we go. So there is a left and a right. Truth be told, I just put it together wrong. That's why I'm starting over. But uh, the, the side here with the opening is the side here with the hole. And it goes in like that. Then I'll put two M3 nuts 
in. Zip that together. Now this is a really quick build. So uh, it's all gonna happen very fast here. We have to get the, the sides in, the top, the bottom, I mean, I'm sorry, the, the, uh, the front and the back together, the top and the bottom, so that we can put the last piece on the top. But before I do this uh, next step here, I wanna make sure this is on. So this goes in here and it hinges on this little piece. So this is gonna be able to move up and down. Um, you're gonna to wanna to watch what you're doing here because this is a freshly glued piece. Um, you want to get this to thread here. And I'm showing you with a hand screwdriver, but honestly, I'm not that patient. So I'm gonna get the first piece uh, going, make sure I've got the holes lined up. Looks like I do. I'm holding it real tight and then I'm gonna cheat and use this. All right. Needs quite a bit of torque. I don't want to punch it through in the wrong place, so I'm gonna watch it. Uh, it went right through, see? So, I'll finish that. I always like doing the last little bit when I do use a clutch screwdriver. I always like to do the last little bit to feel. And on these hinges, I like to leave it just a little bit loose. So when we're done, this can be moved. If you want it to be tightened up, because it's moving around too much, you can give it a little... That's really tight now. So I'm going to back it off just a little. I want enough that it stays in place when I leave it. Not so much I can't move it, and not so much it flops around. Then you can always adjust that later. Just goes through the wood, so it's only kind of kept tight by that one side. There's no um, other side here. Toyed around with putting one there, but I don't really think it's necessary. So this is how you plug this guy in. It's kind of neat. You pull this up. Put that down in there. I always forget which way it goes. No, that's right. These these connections always leave you doubting. You know, it's like, really? Is that all there is to it? Sometimes I do it twice just because I'm like, it doesn't seem like it goes down very far. But it kind of self-centers. very firm. So that's going to lay down like that, kind of stay out of the way. Now before we uh, put the top on, or the back actually, I want to show you how these cords route. So this is our ethernet cable, you have to provide that. It's going to come around this side and we're actually going to thread it right down the middle like that. So it's going to get a little tight in here. The USB that plugs into the printer board, because this thing is going to actually run our printer board. I'm just going to plug in here. Actually, let me get this out of the way. And I know it's kind of hard on a cable, but I'm going to bend it down, try to stress that cable out. You can go to the top or the bottom, but I like to do this because some people might want to buy a USB plug. I mean, I'm sorry, a uh, Wi-Fi USB plug and have this thing hook up on USB. I don't have one right now, but it doesn't come with one. So I'll leave that to, to you. So the last one is actually going to, that's kind of tight up. The last one is power. And this is going to run to bring it power. So this is another one. I like to stress the cable before I plug it in because you sure don't want to give this thing a hard time 
to stress that USB any more than you have to. So, that looks pretty good right there. I may even sneak that Ethernet under first. Let's see if I can do that. It's pretty finicky to be honest. Let's see, I think I have more room if I do it like that. Yeah, that's feeling a little better. Sneak those underneath. So then I've got the bottom there. And now I can put the top on, or the back as it were. Whoops, I want the PB to show. So you need like four hands to get this all dialed in. Now let's do this side. So this is the critical. There, starting to go. Checking this. There it goes. Now, so it's all together, but I have to screw it together. So here's the tricky part. You're going to have to screw this together, putting these things in with it standing vertically is the best way to do it because you got one shot. If you lose that little nut, you're taking the whole thing apart. So once the thread grabs, then you can relax. There's two per side on each end. So, do that. Not in quite far enough. Alright. Took. So, on purpose, I did um, these first because it's what's going to hold everything together. Now I can relax a little bit. But I still want to leave it vertical when I'm putting these. And I'm only doing one at a time. You don't want to get slick and put all four in because then you really will lose one of those. If you've got big hands, some people like to put them in with this real daintily. There it goes. So I'm going to just hand start them. And then I'll go around and tighten them. So basically we're done. I mean this is the this is the box. Very, very simple. Now what I one thing I realized I didn't show because I don't have an image on an SD card. Um, you'll provide I don't think we ship it. Yeah, you'll provide your own SD card and you'll have to burn that image for Octoprint and there's instructions online. You do have to load that SD card up. There's no access. Uh, the SD card works as its hard drive and the that image is the operating system and then it actually saves the data on the SD card too if you save anything. And then you have to be hooked up. This guy's fighting with me. Be hooked up to the internet but Want to make sure everything's connected. You can see it's not too bad to uh, assemble. So if you do end up having to take it apart, it's four little bolts. It goes together pretty quick in a matter of minutes. I'm just checking it. The tightness on these eight. When it starts to squeak a little bit against the wood, I know I'm done. There you go. Camera adjusting I still like, so there it is. Raspberry Pi camera case. All finished.